Thank you, Mr. Chair. So listening to uh, the opening remarks, uh, I've got this to say when it comes to uh, what happens with minimum wage, when it, what happens with income inequality. Uh, I think both are valid issues. Uh, when it comes to how you tackle it, the difference between Main Street USA, small businesses, uh, family owned, uh, even mid-sized businesses, it's a lot different than, in my opinion, public corporations where you've got a different dynamic at play. Uh, when you look at income inequality, you gotta be careful because the opposite of that ends up where you get a central government too overbearing. That's not worked anywhere uh, where it's occurred. And when you look at how did we get into the pickle that we've gotten into currently, I think a lot has to do with many of the major sectors of our economy. And I'd cite healthcare, for instance. You're dominated by a system that has no transparency, has no competition, has barriers to entry, and doesn't have an engaged consumer. The hallmark of what makes markets work. So, I think when you hear discussions of, well, Amazon is paying 15 bucks uh, an hour, uh, to me, for a huge corporation that's got the wherewithal, uh, probably should be more than that. When you look at uh, wage uh, across the country, I, I think that something needs to be done with the minimum wage, but then you need to look at it from a regional point of view. You don't want to disrupt places like Indiana where it's working because you've got a great business climate. You've also got a low cost of living. So if you do anything with minimum wage, it ought to be done to where you regionalize it. Places like New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, probably should be over 20 bucks an hour because their cost of living is so high. But when you took, go to the extreme of uh, what's been talked about here, I think you end up uh, maybe hurting uh, in the long run if you try to bring the federal government in as someone that tries to moderate the situation, other than maybe making sure that markets are free and unfettered and that they're competitive. And sadly, when you look at many of the places where public companies and corporations rule, you do not have that. Um, so I've got a, the other thing is when you look at the structural deficits that we run in this country of close to a trillion dollars a year, my first question, uh, if he's still on, would be for uh, Mr. Wright, that how do you, uh, without upsetting an economy that I think was working fairly decently, you were raising wages the old-fashioned way uh, pre-COVID, how do you bridge a structural deficit when it's mostly associated with programs like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid that we need, but that aren't self-sustaining? And I'd love your explanation. Can you raise revenues in any way that it's not going to upset uh, the economy? That to me, there's a sweet spot. And uh, corporate rates, when they were moved from 35 to 21, affected uh, corporate tax rates were 18%, largely due to all the exceptions in the code. You talk Main Street employers actually got a tax break that I think was driving the economy when you took the qualified income deduction and took that rate from 39.6 to 29.6. I'd love to hear your comments on how you, uh, what your idea is on revenue without upsetting the economy. Uh, well, Senator, we've learned that the uh, deficit uh, and the overall federal debt uh, is less of a threat than we thought it was as recently as even 20 years ago uh, in terms of inflation and inflationary expectations. But at some point, uh, we do need to raise revenue. Uh, and the question obviously becomes where and how and who is going to pay. Uh, the subject of these hearings uh, is widening inequality of income and wealth. And it would seem to me that if we're looking for places to raise revenue, assuming that we come to the point where we say, well, given the needs of this country, we do have to raise revenue, uh, that the place to look is uh, certainly uh, at the top. 
uh, and uh, I, I think that the proposals for a wealth tax merit a great deal of attention. Other countries have a wealth tax. We have property taxes at the local level, a form of wealth tax. It seems to me that uh, given the extraordinary wealth uh, in the hands of certain people in this country, uh, a wealth tax is, is appropriate. We also need to uh, get rid of the loopholes. Uh, loopholes that we've been talking about for years, like the carried interest loophole, uh, there's no reason for it. Uh, and there are many other loopholes as well that have been put into the tax code uh, because there are companies and industries that are uh, hiring lobbyists uh, that uh, have really spent all their time looking for ways of creating way, uh, methods to reduce tax liability. Let's get rid of those loopholes uh, and let's, uh, let's make sure that the base uh, is as wide as possible. Thank you. Do I have time for one quick follow-up? Well, over time, but I'll give you, if it's a brief, very brief. So a quick follow-up question. Uh, where does spending fit into the formula when we've had record revenues of recent uh, years? Uh, and how much of a deficit are you willing to tolerate under the maybe new modern monetary theory? Uh, uh, well, uh, Senator, we don't know uh, all that much, quite frankly, uh, as to modern monetary theory. It's a fairly new idea. The mainstream notion, and I, I, I think that we, we, we don't want to make take too many risks. I, I think that uh, at some point, uh, the deficit and deficit financing and the total federal debt could ignite inflationary expectations. Uh, and that's why we do have to get some get serious about uh, about raising revenue. Uh, the the easiest place to raise revenue, as I just said, is from people who are very wealthy. It has the least dampening effect on the economy. Uh, right now, however, when there is so much underutilized capacity in terms of nine and a half million Americans who have lost their jobs, four million Americans who have dropped out of the wage labor force altogether. Uh, something in the order of 15 million Americans who are working part-time, who'd rather be working full-time. Given all of this underutilized capacity, uh, right now we do need to spend in order to stimulate the economy. I don't think there's any question about that, uh, and there's a great deal of consensus about that uh, with regard to the mainstream. 